Hi everyone, how's it going? My name is Hasib. I'm an engineer here at Langfuse and today I'm going to show you how to integrate Langfuse observability with the LLM apps that are running on the Vercel AI SDK. Quickly, what is the Vercel AI SDK? It's a toolkit for TypeScript to make it easy for you to add LLM features into your, into your app, specifically if you run on Next.js. It makes it easy for you to stream responses from LLMs and also easy for you to switch between different providers by using the adapters available. So if you, for example, want to switch from streaming responses from OpenAI to Entropic, um, using the AI SDK by Vercel makes that quite easy for you. The AI SDK has gained in popularity in the last few weeks and months, such that we at Langfish have decided to um, provide a first grade integration such that users who are running production grade apps running the Vercel AI SDK can benefit from observability deep into each execution that they are they are seeing on their app. Say for example you are having a travel chatbot and you have thousands of users and you want to take a look at one specific execution um, and have deep insight on what has gone right or gone wrong for that specific um, conversation a user had with your travel chatbot. Here we can see um, a user, the Vercel chat user, had um, a question to the chatbot where they asked what, what travel tips are for San Francisco. We see the input is being traced here in Langfuse, the output is being traced in Langfuse. We see a nesting between different execution steps. We see that uh, token usage has been traced correctly, cost has been traced correctly, and we also see how much time the LLM took to provide that response. Awesome, let's take a look together. My colleague Mark has already created an example repository where we have a Next.js app that runs the Vercel AI SDK and has a Langfuse example configured in there already. The example project is basically a chatbot that allows us to stream different responses by the LLM. And we have Langfuse configured such that traces and spans are delivered to Langfuse there. There are three relevant files here. In the next config.js, we need to enable the experimental instrumentation hook. In instrumentation TS, the Langfuse exporter needs to be registered. And on all routes that are streaming or generating completions by LLMs, we need to add experimental telemetry in the options there. So let's take a look together. If we jump over to the clone project, we can see in nextconfig.js that we have enabled the instrumentation hook. We see in instrumentation.ts that we have registered OTEL in the Next.js app and also registers Langfuse exporter as a trace exporter. And if we now take a look at the route that is, for example, streaming a completion, we can see that on the stream text, we have experimental telemetry enabled as true. So whenever we are calling that function, spans will be collected and sent to Langfuse. One important thing that's left to do is to configure our Langfuse exporter to send the spans to the correct project. This is done by adding our API keys um, to the integration. How can we do that? There were two ways possible. The first one is via environment variables, which is the recommended way to do it in production. And the second way is to do it via constructor arguments. This is what I will do now for the sake of this demo. But again, this is not the recommended way to do it in production as they might leak into source control. Perfect. I have now jumped over to the project settings for my Vercel demo project in at cloud.langfuse.com and I will create a new set of API keys that I will delete after recording this demo. Perfect. I have now the host, public key and secret key for this project and I will now add them as constructor arguments to the Langfuse exporter. Awesome. I have now added the keys to the Langfuse exporter and now all the spans that are created in this example Next.js app should be sent to the correct project. Let me now run it and let's have a look together. Awesome, the app is now running on localhost. Let's jump over and we see 
a basic chatbot loading. Let me say something like, give me travel tips for the Yosemite National Park. Awesome, a response has been streamed back with different suggestion on how to behave and what to do in the Yosemite National Park. And I would now expect that we see a trace reflecting this execution being showing up in Langfuse. So let's jump over to the dashboard. In the Langfuse dashboard, I will now go to traces and we see a trace with a correct time step coming up. And it is exactly what we just have done in the chatbot. We asked the chatbot for travel tips at the Yosemite National Park and we see input, output, token usage, um, the latency and costs being tracked correctly in Langfuse. This is super cool. Now I would like to add a few more attributes to this trace, for example, a user ID or a session ID, such that in different tabs I will be also able to filter for this trace. For example, a session ID could be a specific chat session where I want to have all the traces collected under that session. So let's go back and take a look on how to implement that. Okay, now we want to add additional attributes to our trace and the, the specific executions. I have now pulled up the backend route from which we are streaming the LLM responses to the client. And we can see here on the experimental telemetry we have is enabled true. And this is also the place where we can add additional properties that are then reflected in Langfuse. Let's jump back to the documentation and see what exactly is available. Under customization, past custom attributes, we can see exactly what we can, what properties we can add and how they will be reflected in Langfuse. The function ID that we will add as a property under experimental telemetry will be the trace name. The metadata key will then hold more attributes that will be then added to the trace. For example, we can configure the trace ID, we can set text, user ID and session ID and other keys, um, additional keys are then set under the metadata of the trace. Okay, now let's try to add a few more of these properties here such that we can have a richer trace available that will be more powerful to use in the length of platform because we can then collect it under a specific session, we can filter it by a specific user ID um, or we can also filter it by specific text. Cool. I have now enriched this experimental telemetry property here with a function ID. This will be now this will be trace as the trace name. We will have uh, the tags. This will be trace as tags. We will have the session ID. This will be trace as the session ID in Langfuse. We will have the user ID, which will be the user ID in Langfuse. But if we now add additional metadata fields, those will be summarized under the metadata field. So if I for example, at foo is bar and um, my is metadata, then I would expect these two fields to be um, summarized under the metadata field of the trace. So let's do another, let's restart the server and try to run another execution of our chatbot. Okay, I am restarting the server. The app is now running on localhost. I'm jumping back. Where do I have it running? Ah, it's running right here. Let me refresh. I think we need to go to the completion endpoint. And we can now ask for give me tips on getting better at tennis. We see now the response being streamed back. If we jump to the Langfuse dashboard, I would expect a trace reflecting this interaction to show up. So let's go. Here it comes up, perfect. 
and we see exactly give me tips for getting better at tennis we see the session id being tracked we see the user id being tracked we see the name showing up exactly as we configured and the metadata has exactly the my and foo field that we have added and also another property being added from the AI, personal ai sdk awesome let me just quickly summarize what we have achieved by adding three simple steps to our Next.js app that runs the AI SDK, we are getting rich traces by length views. What we have done is we have enabled the instrumentation hook in the next config. We have registered the length views exporter in instrumentation TS. And for all the calls to the AI SDK, we added the experimental telemetry property as described in the length views docs. And just by these three steps, we are getting now rich traces in length views. Not only input and output are traced, but also um, latencies, token usage, cost, and um, by adding tags, session IDs, and user IDs, we can make use of this trace and analyze it across the length views platform. You can then add tra scoring to the uh, trace. You can add e automatic evaluations to the trace and make the full use of the Langfist platform for your production-grade LLM app that runs the AI SDK. Thank you so much for uh, joining me today. And um, for any questions, please reach out to me directly, to the entire team, um, or open an issue on GitHub. We are um, always happy to help and always happy to give you the best possible observability experience for your LLM app. Thank you.